Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. As part of your knowledge series today, we'll be discussing a very important topic out of modern India, which is the Swadeshi movement and the partition of Bengal. We will concentrate on the partition of Bengal concept itself because it is quite interesting and we'll talk about the features of Swadeshi movement generally without going into too much detail. Basically, when it comes to the history of India itself and modern India, Swadeshi is seen as a major shift in what we call as nationalism. So, before we go into the basic understanding of what the partition of Bengal was, 1903, 1904, 1905, these three years are very, very important. You basically need to understand one thing before we go forward, which is that between 1885 to 1905 or generally 1903, what we believe is that the nationalist movement or the national movement itself was based on moderate politics. And when we talk about moderate politics, it means that it is based on what we call as prayer and petition. But within these 20 years, technically, what happens is that there is a frustration which starts to build up within the national movement itself, in the people and the leadership. So the Swadeshi movement technically is seen as a major breakthrough or break even point where the moderate politics gives way to what we call as extremist politics and technically extremism as a form of nationalism is inaugurated by the partition of Bengal of the Swadeshi movement. That is why it becomes a very important question and generally a very important topic for the exam because it is a part of a larger story and a major shift point. Now, the Viceroy who is Curzon had various logics for the partition of Bengal. We also have the Secretary of State, Risley, also talking about why they wanted to partition Bengal. But basically, Bengal as a province had become a problem for the British. Because if you look at the province itself, it is not as big as the Bombay Presidency, which would include even parts of Sindh. It's a big province, has parts of northeastern India, has parts of Bihar, Urissa and Bengal. But its most important feature was that it became the epicenter of nationalism. And this is a very important point that it became an epicenter of nationalism. Basically, Calcutta had become a major problem for the British because Bengal as a province, everything used to spread very quickly because the Bengali nationalist was very, 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 very efficient in spreading the message and Bengal as such had radicalized under the actions of modern education and most of the social reform movement was also concentrated in the Bengal sector. Therefore, the modern education policy along with the social reform movement, what happens is that Bengal generally itself becomes a problematic zone because Bengal as such and the Bengali language technically to some extent gave a lot of homogeneity to this region. So basically, why Bengal is, a first, is the first question which we need to answer. Why would the British go against Bengal? Because Madras presidency is quite big, Bombay presidency is big. Their logic was that we wanted administrative convenience. That was just a logic just to confuse the nationalists. Technically, this was not that big a province when it comes or compared to Bombay or Madras. But basically, the question is that why did they go for Bengal? They went for Bengal because Bengal became a problematic thorn in British rule itself. And here, basically, the middle class intelligentsia was a product of the, the basic colonialistic policies itself. The modern education policy had now created a new educated class which was now asking questions. It also became the epicenter of the national movement itself because by becoming that, it became a problematic zone and you will see by 1911, they will even shift the capital away from Calcutta to Delhi. The basic point was that by 1905, by 1905, Bengal had become a very important hotbed for revolutionary activities, for moderate politics itself. The INC activities were also quite concentrated in Bengal and generally the basic demeanor of Bengal, Bengali nationalists had become quite exaggerated, quite very, very important to the national movement itself. So basically, this is the first point which you need to remember. Why Bengal? Because it had become the epicenter of the national movement. And 
the economic critique, the criticism from colonialism, everything when it comes to the policies, when it comes to constitutional reform, when it comes to what was happening with regards to drain of wealth, the criticism for colonialism was coming from Bengal itself. And because of the Bengali language and culture, it was quite homogeneous, meaning things used to spread quite quickly, quite quickly. So that was one of the reasons why Bengal itself became a very important province in the larger story of our Indian nationalism. Now the point which you need to understand is, that what Karzan is going to do or what Rizli is going to do is technically play a very important masterstroke. The intended consequence was not the Swadeshi movement, but technically the masterstroke was how they were technically divide Bengal itself. Before I go to the British logic and whatever they said, you need to understand one thing very, very clearly. Their basic argument in most of the official documents is Bengal is too big a province. We need administrative convenience. For administrative efficiency, we are going to divide Bengal. But that is technically not going to stand for long because at the end of the day, Bengal at this point of time technically was not as big as even Bombay presidency. So basically that logic would not work. Bombay was not being divided, so why would you divide Bengal? Bengal was about breaking the back of the nationalists. And that we can see in a basic logic which is that Indian nationalism was gaining strength and the partition would, would expect or was the expected intended consequence was that it would weaken the perceived strength of the nationalist and it was becoming a center of Indian nationalism that is why it was important. The government decision to partition Bengal was already in the mix by 1903. 1904 we had the very famous quote of Rizle and that quote itself is very very significant because the Home Secretary to the Government of India, Rizle, will argue in on 6th December 1904, and this was the basic logic, that Bengal United is power. Bengal divided will pull several different ways, meaning that if you divide Bengal, it will start to go different ways. This is what the Congress leaders feel, meaning the INC also knew that if they are trying to do this, generally dividing Bengal was about dividing the nationalists itself. Their apprehensions are perfectly correct. They, for, they form one of the great merits of the scheme. In this scheme, one of our main objects is to split up and thereby weaken a solid body of opponents to our rule. Basically, this quote itself tells you what was the basic thing which, which the British wanted, which is that the British wanted to break nationalism and nationalism at this point of time the epicenter was Bengal. There were activities which were happening in Madras and Bombay, but Bengal, it was going out of hand for the British. Now, how will they divide Bengal? They will decide that we will have two Bengals, one Western Bengal comprising of Bengal, Bihar and Urissa. On the other hand, we have Eastern Bengal, which will have Eastern Bengal and Assam. The capital of Western Bengal will be Calcutta and Dhaka will be the capital of Eastern Bengal. But the master stroke of this division, the line which you see here, is not the way they divided it, but it was how they were technically going to divide the Indian itself or the Bengalis itself. See, the basic logic of dividing Bengal like this, this is the partition of Bengal which was then planned for 16th October 1905. This is going to happen on 16th October 1905. This line is going to come into existence. Now, the basic point was that the the way they wanted to divide, the line which they decided to divide or Curzon, what he wanted to divide Indians into is on two bases, one on language, other on religion. So remember it is not just religion but language. So basically the Bengali Hindu nationalist was the problem for was the problem for the British. Now what they wanted to do was they wanted to make this Bengali Hindu nationalist into a minority in both places. What do I mean by that? Basically in this sector in the West Bengal sector this sector the logic was language and in this sector it was religion. What do I mean by that? What I mean by this is that in this sector, the 
Bengali, the Bengali Hindu would technically become a linguistic minority because it has Hindi speaking, Bhojpuri speaking and Odia speaking sectors. So out of the 37 million people here, the 17 million only speak Bengali. So basically in this sector, it was about making the Bengali Hindu not based on religion. Basically all are Hindus, but it was about technically making them linguistically minority. On the other hand, in this sector, the logic was that this sector more or less he will become a minority or she will become a minority based on religion. Because here the Bengali Muslim population was quite big. So basically in Eastern Bengal and Assam, the basis was religion that we will technically break the Bengali strength by making sure that the Bengali speaker is both a minority in this and this somehow. And in this he is a minority according to language and in this he is a minority according to religion. So basically this was a master stroke which Curzon was technically playing with which was to technically break Bengal in such a way that the linguistic and the religious basis both were at play at the same point of time. So basically this division was based on two things, basis of language and basis of religion. Reducing the Bengalis to a minority in Bengal itself as in the new proposed Bengal, there were only 17 million Bengalis and 37 million Hindi and Uriya speakers. So technically, language basis they become a minority. On the other hand, on the basis of religion, in the western half there would be a Hindu major, minor, uh, majority which is 42 million out of 54 million. In the eastern half they would technically be a Muslim majority, 18 million out of the 31 million. So basically in this they become a minority on the basis of religion in this in the basis. So this becomes the language minority sector, this becomes the religion minority sector. Now this is again significant why? Because this was to technically break the back of Bengali nationalism. Basically they cannot, they cannot spread or they cannot be effective in this sector because language becomes a barrier and in this sector because religion becomes a barrier. And Curzon's divide and rule policy was working very, very well. He was already doing that. So basically the, the breakdown of what we call as the, the artificial antagonism which was being technically generated by the British, that was now fully at work. So basically dividing the Muslims and Hindus now not based on language but on religious basis was also part of the larger divide and rule policy. And remember there was no natural antagonism between these communities in this sector. It was all artificially created and that was all British policy. All communalistic trends when it comes to Nilidgo, when it comes to Curzon, everything was all British policy. We have the basic Hindu Muslim politics of this region was quite stable for a very very long time. It was only British politics which started to play with it and started to create this us versus them or the concept of Hindu versus Muslim. That was all artificially generated in this sector. Now the basic point is I hope that you understand the first point which is why were they dividing Bengal in such a way. So we've now understood why Bengal which is because it was in this Calcutta became an epicenter of nationalism. On the other hand, we now understand what is the basic logic of the British, which is the intended consequence was to divide the Bengali nationalists into two minorities, language basis and religion basis. And now we also have an understanding that what is the basic divide and rule policy. So what was the consequence or what was the response to this which technically becomes the Swadeshi movement. So remember the Swadeshi movement is a direct response to the, to the partition of Bengal that is why they are taught together. So the Swadeshi build up will start since 1903 itself there were 
rumors of this to happen. So at that point of time, the leadership which was going to go against the British and argue against the partition of Bengal, arguing against that administrative convenience is SN Banerjee, KK Mitra and we have PC Ray and basically they will be the first form of leadership which will try to use a lot of petitions, lots of protests to break down the basic logic of what we call as the partition of Bengal. So the methods they adopted were petitions to the government, public meetings, memoranda and they even had used newspapers such as the Hitabadi, the Sanjeevani and Bengali. Now basically they are still showing moderate traits. And this phase is important because between 1903 to 1905, moderate methods will, will be used. Once the moderate method will technically not work, they will move to Swadeshi. And the strength of this protest can be gauged from the fact that with the first two months we have close to 500 protests which were happening and meetings which were happening in East Bengal alone, which is in the, in the eastern sector, Dekka and Chittagong sector. Now basically, the first build-up, as I told you, is this moderate phase. It's not that moderate, moderate politics was automatically given up. It was technically created. It was technically created by moderate politics initially and then abandoning of it when the British will not do anything. The outcry was so much that in March of 1904 and January of 1905, there were numerous petitions, close to 69 of them, with close to 70,000 people signing it which was sent to the government of India and the Secretary of State saying that the partition of Bengal should not go forward. They knew that the partition of Bengal was not being done for administrative convenience. It was dividing the Bengalis on the basis of language and what we call as religion. So basically the outcry was very, very justified because they knew what the British were trying to do, which is to break Bengali culture. So we now understand why Bengal how Bengal is being partitioned and we understand the outcry. Basically, first it is moderate politics. But by January of 1905, when it was clear that on 16th October 1905, the partition is going to happen, the movement starts to shift. And when the movement starts to shift, the basic understanding changes. So, the formal proclamation of what we call as the Swadeshi movement, once the moderate politics will be given up, came on 7th August 1905 in a meeting in the Calcutta Hall. The movement, which became now more and more sporadic and spontaneous, focused on and with the leadership now moved away from petition to protest and what we are going to see is boycott and the Swadeshi program. And they assembled in a town hall and formed what is called the Swadeshi Bandhav Samiti, which propagated the Swadeshi goods and services. Now, this word Swadeshi, which is indigenous became very, very important against foreign. And I'll talk to you about the Swadeshi program generally. But at 7th August meeting, the famous boycott resolution will be passed. Even moderates such as Surendranath Banerjee will tour across the country to talk about boycott. And on 1st September, the government formally announced that 16th October 1905, the partition is going to happen. So basically, the first and foremost protest which they found was boycott. Now you are going to say, sir, why boycott? The point is that boycott is important because the basic nationalistic argument was that the British were here for economic interest. So they wanted to hit the British where it hurt the most. So they said that their basic industrial revolution and their factories are filling up our country with cheap cloth. Let's do one thing. Let's make sure that their economic interest is hurt. Therefore, the British now starts to feel a little bit of pain. Maybe political protest would not do anything. But once their economic, basic economic logic and basic economic opportunity in India would be taken away, the Britishers would start to, in a way, feel the pain. And that is why Swadeshi becomes important because they were able to devise a program which would actually make the British think about their policy. So, the Swadeshi movement itself is technically considered a very important watershed moment in Indian history because of the fact that the Swadeshi program was quite unique. So, the basic point is because the economic critique was available to everybody, 
the first and foremost thing which the Swadeshi movement did and now I am going into the features of the Swadeshi movement is the boycott of foreign goods which we already know was based on the economic critique that if we are going to boycott the imports will start to fall and once the imports will start to fall that will hit the economy of Britain itself and there was a major shift close to 20 to 25 percent shift or decrease in boycott was there uh, in uh, imports was there which in turn meant that boycott was technically working. So this is the first program but Swadeshi was just not about Swadeshi goods or services it was about Swadeshi everything in education also and basically in enterprise also meaning that for the first time we see that companies which were fully Indian run will start to develop and this word Swadeshi became very very important because the word Swadeshi now did not just mean goods but everything else. So we see national education where students will leave all British run colleges and schools that was again a form of Swadeshi. On the other hand we have Swadeshi enterprises, steamboat companies, we have cotton cloth company, uh, factories which will develop at this point of time. But a very important contribution of the Swadeshi to our national movement is also what we call as two very important words. The first word is Swaraj and the other one is Atma Shakti which is that the word Swaraj got was actually given to the nationalist vocabulary by the Swadeshi movement in the concept of self-reliance and Atma Shakti which is self-assurance. So basically Swaraj and Atma Shakti were two words which became very very common during this period because of the Swadeshi movement itself. So what, what does Swaraj at this point of time means? When everything can be indigenous, when everything can be Swadeshi, then why not rule be our own? So this concept of Swaraj which will become extremely important and we will have, we want, we, by 1929 we will want Purna Swaraj. The basic point is that Swaraj self-reliance, this word Swaraj became very very important and it entered the vocabulary of our our national movement. Second is Atma Shakti which is that the British throughout their initial intervention throughout the company rule had argued that Indians don't have the capacity to rule themselves or don't have the capacity to even produce anything. We were uncivilized, we were barbarians. This Atma Shakti concept is to believe in what then Indian can do and what a basic Indian can do with regards to enterprise, with regards to education. And this is a very important point because Atma Shakti gave or broke away this white man's burden concept and now it was very very clear that Swaraj and Atma Shakti were now household words which had entered the vocabulary itself. So we have national enterprises, we have national education as in response to hit the basic concept of Swadeshi, boycott was not just in goods but of boycott of schools, colleges and everything else. On the other hand, in culture sphere, we will see new paintings. We will have important literature which will develop, which will talk about what we call as the concept of Bengal, the concept of Bengali culture and bring everybody together. An important method again, which was developed at this point of time, which will be taken forward by Bal Gangadhar Tilak himself, which is using festivals and melas as a very important way of spreading the message. So the, when Rabindranath Tagore will call for what we call as the Raksha Bandhan on 16th, October 1905 he will say that from north and from east and west Bengal everybody should technically tie a Raksha Bandhan as a form of solidarity, as a sign of solidarity. He was using a festival in order to push a message. The same way all Bengali festivals and this, this program will spread very quickly to Bombay also to Madras also. Basically they were now using cultural means to express nationalism and then we have public meetings and processions as very standard things. So we have picketing, the uh, the alcohol, the basic picketing was of alcohol shops because in on alcohol there was a lot of duty which the British used to take. So basically when it comes to cloth, when it comes to liquor, when it comes to other things it was very very common that the, for the Swadeshi program was very very effective in that regard. So before I go to the questions itself you should understand one thing which is that the basic concept is very simple. Why Bengal? 
because Bengal was the epicenter of national movement. What was the logic which was given to the people? Administrative, but technically not true. The logic of the British was to break Indian nationalism and that was to break Bengal. Bengal in such a way that technically divi gets divided on the basis of language and on the basis of what we call as religion and on the bas basis of language they would become a minority in West Bengal and they would become a minority in East Bengal on the basis of religion. Then the response between 1903 to 1905 is generally what we call as the moderate phase of the Swadeshi which is the petitions and a lot of protest along with a lot of town hall meetings, newspaper is used quite a lot. After 1905 the proper Swadeshi program is introduced and the Swadeshi program generally is important because it talks about boycott, it talks about national education, it talks about national education and national enterprise and the concept of what we call as the concept of the Swaraj and Atma Shakti became very very important and this will become the stepping stone to the next phase of Indian nationalism what we call as the extremist phase and between 1905 to 1915 we will see that the Swadeshi program will also lead to technically a split between the moderates and the extremists in the, in the Surat session, Surat split. But 1905 to 1915 extremist phase, Bilal Balpal, Bala Tilak and Bipin Chandrapal will become extremely important personalities with regards to Surindranath Banerjee and Firosha Mehta on the moderate side. But Generally, the extremist phase is inaugurated by a very important movement which we call as the partition of Bengal and the Swadeshi movement. So I hope that basically all this is clear and the understanding is totally clear because basically partition of Bengal when you understand the logic automatically the Swadeshi becomes clear to you. Perfect. So now let us take the questions which are there. Uh, there are, there are diff, the INC was an all India national party. That is the very, it's technically not even called a, you can't call it a party. INC is an Indian National Congress. It's a revolution, it's a nationalist body. It's a nationalist institution. Okay. Why were the three areas called Bengal presidencies, Bengal, Bombay, Madras? How is presidency different from other areas? So basically see, Presidency is based on the logic that technically it is based on what we call as governorship because governor controls a presidency. It's, it's called a, the difference between a presidency and a smaller area would be smaller area used to come under commissioners whilst presidency used to come under governor. And Bengal, Bengal Madras and Bombay are ironically the three biggest areas which they got control through the Anglo Mysore, Anglo Maratha and what we call as the Bengal Wars. So basically they are called presidencies because they are under governors. Other areas which are smaller go into commissioners area and then we have princely states itself. But basically they are called presidencies. The word presidency is just a way of saying that because it is under the presidency of the governor that is why it is a presidency but they are actually very big units in that regard. The moderate traits, as I said, is based on the fact that it initially there was a lot of petitioning which will be later taken away. Uh, the term Congress is used in university, Congress, Senate. Now, again, you are confusing these words. Congress means any congregation. There is no issue in, the, in regards to that. Yes, in the wake of the Swadeshi movement, was there a gradual change in the attitude of the moderates? Yes. Basically, uh, they will be very, 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 very adamant by 1906, but 1907, there will be a major split. Thereafter, thereafter, the moderates will realize that without the extremists, it makes no sense. The basic national movement itself was fizzing out at that point of time. That is why we will have the Lucknow Pact. But basically, 1906, 1907, they knew that the point was that the Moderates did realize and basically Firosha Mehta himself was the one who was the one on which the shoe was hurled. That is why he had a lot of lot of problems with the extremists. But by later periods he also realized that the extremists were needed to take the national movement forward. Perfect. So with this I would like to end the session. Thank you so much for your patience. I will see you next week with another three, three sessions. This is the, uh, the last session for this week.
So we'll be talking about Sufism, we'll be talking about decline of Mughals and we'll try to mix and match another topic related to art and culture. So basically we are trying to give you as many topics related to mains and prelims as possible in the knowledge series and I hope it is helping you in your preparation. Thank you so much. I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.